Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about categorical data. Now, we've already seen that when we're trying to predict something that is numeric, uh, we're generally going to be using a regression. And when we're trying to predict something that's categorical, we'll use a classification. And the things we learned for that so far were linear regression and logistic regression. Um, now, in this video and in the next couple of following, I'm going to be tackling a new problem, which is what if an input variable is categorical? Um, it turns out that regardless of whether we're doing um, linear regression or logistic uh, regression, we're going to need to have numeric inputs. And so what we're going to do is use something called one-hot encoding, convert categorical data to uh, numeric data. And, um, and so we won't get to that in this video, but we're going to be building uh, towards that and motivating it. So the data I want to work with in this example is um, a data set from the, the city of Chicago that they have about um, monitoring waves on Lake Michigan um, in various Chicago beaches. And there's six beaches that they have. And so I've already downloaded this data from here. Uh, it's in a file called waves.csv. And, um, and I can look at it and I see there's a bunch of stuff like the temperature and um, the wave height, which is what we're going to want to predict. And what I'm going to try to do is predict wave height based on wave period um, initially. And then eventually I'm going to add in this other factor, this categorical data, which is the beach name. Okay, so right off, right away, the, what I'm seeing is that since I'm predicting wave height, that's numeric, I'm going to be doing a linear regression on this data. Okay, so the first thing you're often going to want to do on a project is, is do some basic plotting and get a feel for it and gain some intuition about how you might want to build your machine learning pipeline. And so I'm going to do that. Maybe one of the first things I do is I do a scatter plot of the thing I'm trying to predict and the thing that it's based on. So uh, let's say I'm I plot the wave period, the time, the time between waves, the x-axis, and then I'm going to get this um, uh, wave height on the y-axis. And I do that, and I can originally immediately see that the data is pretty, um, pretty dirty, right? I can see that you know there's not such a thing as really a negative height for a wave. And since I have this, these values down here that it's like negative 100,000, um, that's messing up my whole plot, right? There's actually a bunch of variety up here that's kind of getting squished. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my data, right? And so, so how am I going to do that? I'm going to say that I want uh, to make sure that I'm only looking at data where, where these things are positive. Right, and, and this is one of the reasons to plot beforehand, right? I mean, I could have gone ahead and done some machine learning and it might have learned something. And probably what it learned is when data is missing, uh, well, I mean, what is the wave height, right? I probably learned some nonsense, right? So I want to have, make sure that the wave period is greater than zero and, um, and, and really just to be safe. I think that's actually probably enough. Let me just try plotting that. Uh, the wave, oh, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I have to say data frame equals that. That, that's more reasonable, but just to be safe, I want to make sure that both of these important variables uh, are positive, right? So I'm going to grab this too. And oh, there we go. I want to make sure that uh, this one, this wave height is also positive, just to be safe. Okay. Now, when I'm doing this kind of scatter plot, right, there's a lot of points on top of each other. A perfect opportunity to, um, to, set an alpha of transparency. Maybe what I'll do is I'll set the color to be black and the alpha be, I don't know, 0 0.05. I can actually see something there. And, and so at this point, I'm gonna actually make an observation. And my observation is that uh, this is a, a non-linear relationship, right? For linear, I can imagine fitting some sort of straight line to this data. The higher the wave period, the higher the wave height, but I don't see that. I see a time goes off and then comes back down. Maybe, maybe kind of like a, a quadratic uh, formula, right? Where the coefficient on x squared is negative, right? So, um, so the implication there, right, is that I'm going to use polynomial features later. Okay. Well, the other thing I want to do is I want to see if um, the beach I'm looking at uh, matters, right? Should I be trying to just do this overall, or should I be going by uh, by the beach? So maybe the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the different beach names, see how many beaches we're dealing with. 
So I'm going to say uh, beach names equals data frame of beach name. Uh, and I want to get that as a set. Do that. Beach names. And, uh, and you know what? Let's just make this a sorted list. Just like that. And great. So these are, I can see there are six beaches I'm, I'm dealing with. And, um, and so immediately, right, any plot that I have, like, for example, a scatter plot, it's better if I can give more context and show is this a trend overall or does it vary uh, by subcategory. So this would be a very natural place to use uh, subplots, right, so I can show different parts or, or show the pattern for different beaches. And so I'm going to do exactly that. I am going to uh, do plt.subplots. Did I import plt already? It looks like I did. And, um, and since I can see there are six beaches, um, I'm going to figure out how I want to do this. Maybe, maybe I'm going to say there's like two rows and three columns, um, something like that. And I see this is returning a figure and, um, and then these axes, right? So let me, let me just do this. I'm going to say fig axes equal that. And let me look at these axes. Here I see it's a, a two-dimensional array, right, of these axes, if I look at the shape of that. And, um, and so maybe what I'd like to do is just say reshape. Um, I just want it one dimensional, however long that needs to be. And, um, and I'm going to put that in a list, right? So I'm going to do this. And the op advantage of doing this is that I'm going to loop over these beach names. And for each one, I'm going to pop off one of these axis subplot regions and actually um, use it to do my plotting. Okay. That's what I'm heading towards. And let, let me make this a little bit larger, right? So maybe I'm going to do like a 12 by 12 by 8. That's I have a little space. And, um, and so at this point, let's loop over the beaches, right? So I'm going to say uh, for B and uh, beach names, um, I'm going to get a beach data frame, which is going to be my original frame where the beach name uh, is that, okay? And then I want to plot that one in an AX. So maybe let me just do the same plotting I did before. I do this thing, like so. But instead of that, I'm going to do beach DF, uh, just like that. And then, then I have to say, well, well, if I do this right now, they all are going to go to the same one. Actually, no, they all go to new ones, which is not great. I would like to use these existing ones that I have in this nice list. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say AX equal a a a AXs, axes dot pop zero, right? So I'm going to be going kind of row by row here over the subplots. I'm just going to pass this in right here. And I, and I do that, and I can already see I'm getting the different uh, beaches in this, this figure, right? Um, now, there's a few more things I should probably do. Um, one of them is that I would like to know which beach is which, and so I'm going to say ax.setTitle, and, um, and the title is, well, B, right? Over the beach names, I'm going to do that. Now, um, that's a little bit crowded, and so I need to adjust the space between, uh, between these, and I am going to do that with, um, my notes here, uh, the subplots adjust function, right? So right here after I do this, I'm going to say plt uh, subplots adjust. I don't have this memorized, right? I'm just trying to check my um, notes here. That's kind of a fine thing to do. And um, and then there's like the height space. So I'm going to say height space is 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 of the figures is how much space I'm going to get between these. And, and now that's actually kind of looking pretty good, right? I can see it's not overlapping. Now, uh, to make it easy to compare across these, uh, notice that they're all kind of on a different scale right now, which is not great. And so what I should probably do when I create this is I should say share y equals true. And so now they're all on the same scale and I can actually compare across different uh, different beaches, right? And, and maybe let me just crank this up for a moment. Um, you can see that some of them have these really outliers where it's a very, um, a uh, high wave day, right? That's kind of what's scaling it. Let me just put this back down. And um, and I can see that some of these beaches are pretty pretty similar, right? So for example, um, uh, Montrose Beach up here uh, looks very similar to Osterman Beach, 
Uh, but other ones look pretty different. For example, especially this one right here, this uh, uh, Calumet Beach, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, has a very distinct pattern um, than the other ones, right? So maybe if I was making observations here, right, observation, uh, beaches have distinct patterns. And, and that's going to have implications where I'm going to do my machine learning, right? What am I going to do? So before I saw, hey, I want to use polynomial features because there's this up and down thing. And this one, I'm going to use something called one hot and encoding to deal with the categorical data. I may actually introduce um, which beach we're on to, uh, to kind of factor this in. Okay, so now I'm ready to start uh, setting up my machine learning pipeline. And so I'm going to head down here. And, uh, and there's a bunch of stuff I have to import from sklearn. Uh, like I need to get my pipeline object and um, and, uh, and and well, looking back at what we're trying to predict, right? I think we made the observation earlier that we're doing regressions, right? Because this is numeric. So I'm going to down here. Um, I am going to. I'm going to import a linear regression. And um, and then we want some metrics, right? So I want to from metrics. You know, a nice metric that's going to give us a zero to one score is the um, is the amount of let me let me try to remember what this is. This is the explained variance. You know what? And I and I'm not remembering it. So you know, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work this like so, and. Then I'm going to just do a Duran. I don't even have to go look up the documentation right now. I'm forgetting exactly how to spell it, and um, and and the demo manages to get worse. What am I doing here, Ryan? This is on line one. Uh, oh, you know what? From this, that's probably why my autocomplete wasn't working. Uh, and I wanted the plain variance score, which is somewhere. This is the one I was looking for. Okay, so I want to grab that one. Right, to evaluate how my linear regression is doing. When I do that, that's all good. Goodness, more mistakes. Okay, we're actually making our, our way there slowly but surely. Um, let me now create my pipeline. And, um, and then what I'm gonna do is in this video, I'm gonna show how taking this first observation into account works. And then we're gonna do some, have a break. And in the next video, we're actually gonna show how uh, we're gonna do this one hot encoding. And so, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create my pipeline. And a pipeline is a list of steps. And, um, and those steps might be some transformers. And I'm actually eventually have two of them, right, for my polynomial features and my one hot encoding. Uh, and then it's going to end, right, after the transformers, um, I have to have a, an estimator. And uh, the estimator is my linear uh, regression. Just like that. And the trick is, right, I can't just put these different um, kind of modules in here. I have to give them names. And I do that by passing in a two tuple, right? So you will just call this linear regression. Um, that's what is expected for a pipeline. And um, OK, at this point, right, I actually want to do my um, work, right? So I'm going to say um, x columns equals, I want to know what beach name is and I want to know what the wave period is and um, and then what I'm trying to predict right is is the the wave height right so let's let's try doing this I'm going to say um, p dot bet and what am I fitting it to well, I'm going to have some training data which notice I haven't actually created yet I do my x columns and then I'm going to have my what I'm actually uh, predicting, right? So, uh, and, and of course, I don't have my training data yet. So let me, let me do that too quickly. I'm going to say from sklearn uh, model selection uh, import. Um, I need to have this train test split, train test split, just like that. And um, let me actually do that. So train and test data is going to be from a train test split on my data frame. And you just peek at this again. Okay, I'm going to come down here, and um, and so it's always helpful to notice when we're making progress, right, on our bug. Um, I got a different error, so that is progress. And what is it complaining about? 
can't deal with this categorical data yet, right? It doesn't know how to convert that string uh, to a number, and, and eventually we will do that, but it's going to create some work on our part. So this point, I'm just trying to do it directly on, on that wave period, right? So I do that, and then what I'd like to do is I'd like to evaluate how well that works. And, um, and to do that, well, what, what do I do? I need to call um, predict, right? So I need to make a prediction based on uh, my test data, right, my inputs. I'm gonna do that. And are these good or are they bad? Well, to find out, I need to feed it to one of my metrics, right? And for my metrics, uh, I've been using this explained variance score, right? So uh, that was what is predicted. And I want to compare that to what is actually the truth, which is whatever is in that Y column. And I can actually see we're doing horrible, right? We got a negative score. So after doing our linear regression, we did worse than uh, than if we had just kind of taken the mean as our only number. And so let, let me add, add this here, All right? So I'm gonna do this. Oh, uh, what I would like to do is I would like to also run this on my training data, right? Um, in the end, right, the test number is more meaningful, but comparing these two numbers can tell us something. And I see both these numbers are small, so that doesn't mean I really have any worry about um, overfitting. It's just that simply, I cannot fit a straight line to this pattern very well. And, and of course, we knew that, right? We saw earlier that we're going to want to use some polynomial features to kind of get not a straight line, but that quadratic up and down. And so what I'm going to do here, right? I had that as a to-do. I want to add some polynomial features. And so I'm going to add those polynomial features like that. And, um, and let's have a second second order. And so I run this again. And, um, and and you know what? I think that the problem here is that I didn't import that yet. So I can say from sk learn dot pre processing, I want to import uh, polynomial features like so. Now let's actually give this a try. And um, and this is much better, right? So I mean, now I'm getting to about five percent, four and a half percent, I guess. And um, and uh, and I don't have any signs of overfitting, right? I mean, that kind of works well on both of them. Out of curiosity, let's just see what happens here. Right? I see it was a much smaller um, number, right? So it was like a fraction, you know, 1% or even uh, negative, right? So this is definitely helping capture that pattern, even though this is not an amazing score. Um, you know, like 0.9 would be an amazing score. Let's see what happens if we increase this further. Um, there doesn't seem to be much harm um, in doing that, right? It's kind of realizing it doesn't need that. So I'm just trying to leave it here, right? Keep the model. You know, one is no good, but having second order polynomials is helping, right? And so that's good. And um, and so I've done this one part, the poly part. And then just by looking back at this, I can see in the next video, I may have to take the beach into account. And when we do that, uh, we're going to be getting up close to 10% instead of 4.5%.